Hey, Maxie. Hey, Andy. <laughs> What's going on? Nice to see you. It's you good. just we just got here. It's good to see you too. No. Uh. So, a lot's happened. Uh-huh. A lot has fucking happened since the last time we we did one of these. That's right. It was so, that Wednesday. Yeah. For for those of you who don't know, he was in an accident and uh, in a car accident, and he scared the shit out of all of us. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna superimpose it right now. Can we show the image on the? Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna warn the viewers right now. It is graphic, and your first thought it's gonna be fake. Not fake. Super gruesome. If you're squeamish, fast forward the next five seconds. Wait. Now. You like how I zoomed into that? I'm going to zoom into that. Good. Uh, so, so we got that picture around. We, we received a text from Max probably about 20 minutes prior. Uh, of just a random meme or something that you sent. And then 20 minutes later, we got a text saying, good news, everyone, bad news. No, I'm just kidding. He said, uh, it said bad news. The picture popped up and it said, this is real, <laughs> but I'll be okay. And we didn't hear from Max for <laughs> the next six hours. And we were terrified, and Adrian even was calling hospitals, <laughs> like to see where they taken you. Oh, jeez, dude. Yeah, we were terrified. Um, but after that, we found out you were okay. But would you like to tell that story? Yes, and just know that I'm going to think about that for the rest of my life, <laughs> because that's the one thing I always tell people not to do posting pictures of themselves in the hospital with zero context and then don't respond to messages andy or anyone you know that that does that (laughs) so um the the concise version yeah i was in a minor fender bender but i had a defective airbag and essentially what happened was the emblem from the middle of the steering wheel when the airbag deployed it became shrapnel and I finally get to use this word, like legit, it lacerated my arm in two spots. And I mean, you already saw the worst of it anyway, so it's actually closing up pretty well. Ooh, can we get in on that? You wanna get closer on that? I still got my stitches in there. They should be, they're coming out uh, this Thursday. But yeah, it's closing up. The body's amazing, bro. Cause this happened less than a month ago. Now you have Franken arm. Yes, I love when people say that. I mean, it looks great. I'm excited. I think it's really cool. I mean, you were talking about getting tattoos like around it. I was like, gonna. I'm thinking about. It. I think I have to wait. What is it like a year? I think it's I can longer. Scar tissue. Yeah, I think it's longer. I think it's like somewhere between. Um, I don't know, like five years or something, like maybe more. Fact check. I have to fact check that one. That's true. Fact check. But it's crazy because I can I can already kind of see it. It was pretty like numb, at first. But, and now it's starting to kind of like, so there's like the main little like line and then there's all these other ones across. It kind of looks like the top of a football right now. Nice. A little bit. But anyway. I want to just throw you around. <laughs> <laughs> Talk nerdy to me. Please. <laughs> but it was pretty quick, all things considered. Uh, I compared it to like a tiger lunging at you and then like, just kind of scraping you like like almost missing you entirely and then it's just gone so you really had no time to like process the fear and then you just had to like address well set up you know. set up the situation well, what, was, what was going on like set up the scenario here so oh yeah, yeah yeah okay so uh i was driving along the freeway and traffic stopped like or not stopped but but it slowed down pretty dramatically and i tried to break and i even have driven past that in or part of the freeway prior or or after the accident and um i could see my brake marks no like i could see yeah there was like 15 foot long brake marks fuck yeah and um 
it's it was very like cinematic in a way yeah like i didn't think that it would feel exactly like that but it was very much like you know oh man and then just like waking up kind of blurry some kind of wobbliness dizziness and i could see the car in front of me and my windshield didn't break their their car was pretty okay they even pulled over to the shoulder they were there waiting for me but um i tried to move and that's when i saw my arm and thankfully i never felt it cuz I mean, looking at it, you would yeah. think of, you know, it was like an intense amount of pain or something like that, but yeah. didn't feel it. And the one thing I knew was critical was like how quickly I was like passing out. Oh, shit. Yeah. Because I mean, and it wasn't like, uh, you know, like you get like a sleepy feeling mm-hmm. and you can feel yourself dozing off. Yeah. This was like blackout, wake up, blackout, yeah. wake up. Fuck. And then it was just like longer periods of blacking out. Right? Yeah. So. Were you like panicking at that point? For or? a few seconds. Yeah. For a few seconds, I did panic. Yeah. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of ugly screaming. And. Ah. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was like unbridled. Jesus Christ. But I uh, was like, okay, I have to, like, I have to call 911. So I picked up my phone off the like uh, floor by the passenger seat, 911 immediately. And I was still kind of screaming. I was just like, my arm, my arm, my arm. And she was like, well, where are you? Where are you? She's like, you got to calm down. You got you to talk me through it. I told her, like, I gathered my breath. I sat up and I could feel like certain, like, I was like present. So I was like, I'm going to take advantage of it. And then I told her where I was, like, really quick, just like, I'm on the 405, da 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 this thing. And then I was just like, I'm, I'm blacking out, I'm blacking out, I'm blacking out. She's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You got to stay awake. And then... It was just like internal at that point. I can't remember exactly what she was saying, but I was telling myself like, I am not going to black out. Like, I was just like, this, this is, this isn't how it goes. This is not where it ends. And I wasn't even thinking like anything like that. I was just like telling my body, you are not blacking out right now. And then the um, 911 operator was like, do you have anything you can put on the wound? And then by that point, like I was trying to, I, I remember with my right arm trying to grab my shirt and I mean, there's no way I would have been able to get it off and onto my arm, but thankfully like a second after grabbing that look and the paramedic was right there and he put the gauze on my arm and he was like, can you move? Like, can you get out or do you need our help? So I was like, I think I need your help. Open up the door. They were like, we're going to lay you down. You're going to feel a lot better. They laid me down on the freeway. And then like, I was just feeling like I was I was coherent for all of that. Like I stopped mm-hmm. feeling like, you know, the blackout feeling. And um, they were talking. I could hear them talking. They were like trying to figure out why is he bleeding so much? They were like, this wasn't even like that critical. And the other paramedic, he's looking around in the car and he picks up the emblem. And it was just like all spikes. Fuck. And he was just like, it was this right here. And I remember him dropping it and hearing it go like clink on the ground. Like that thing was... People were saying it was aluminum, uh-huh. but I mean, even if it was just aluminum at the speed it was coming out, it was enough to do that damage. And I just remember feeling angry. Like I was angry that like my plans were disrupted. I was angry that that happened. I wasn't, it's, it's weird how your thoughts go. I was, it's probably different from person to person, but I just remember feeling like, like frustrated. Yeah. You know, like, damn, you know, of course this would happen. Yeah. Of course something like this happens. You know what I mean? And then they put me like in the ambulance and I was just thinking like, man, like I'm, I'm like, I'm too broke for this. Yeah. That's what my thoughts are. Yeah. This is crazy. You know, like I was talking to my dad about it <laughs> just yesterday and we were like saying it's, it's nuts because like in another country it, I would be like, fine. Yeah. It would have just been like, oh you know, we take half your money in taxes, but guess what? Here's why we do that. Yeah. You know, and I probably wouldn't even have stitches in my arm, all this stuff. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Oh, well, that's a very important fucking point, though. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's really fucking annoying. It's like, that's, this is where we're at. Yeah. The fact that 
your arm could be fucking open and you're bleeding. Dude, we could see your muscle tissue in there. Like, you're so, I mean, I'm pretty sure there was tendon in yeah, there. Yeah, there's, you know? there's tendons you could see. So you could see that shit. So lucky, missed an artery, by the way. And seeing all this shit and you're like, holy fuck. And you being a musician and you being a fucking bass player. Yeah. Where it's like, this is your life. And mm-hmm. like the possibility of, oh my God what's this going to do? Yeah. And the thought is, I cannot afford this. That's what I thought about. And it's like, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. Because the fucking, you go in there, we were watching, uh, Martin and I were watching The Simpsons the other day and they had this great joke on there where someone was in the fucking hospital and like, Homer gets pissed off, like Grandpa Simpson is in the hospital or some shit. He's mm-hmm. on his deathbed or whatever. It's a new episode. It's pretty cool. But uh, he uh, he gets so pissed off at something and he grabs a box of like of like cotton balls and he just squeezes it and somebody goes sir you just squeezed a box of of hospital grade cotton balls that'll be $75,000 oh, <laughs> <laughs> not that far from the truth <laughs> seriously not that far from the truth yeah but anyways we digress no and you know there's there's a lot of uh ways to look at this there's a lot of like facets to it and um you got into an interesting one just now which was that i'm trying to this is the part i can't figure out and this is where i'll be real like it does get emotional for me yeah thinking about it in this way but it's cool it makes me feel very like loved it makes me feel very like i have to figure out why this all happened or something like that mm-hmm. you know so think about it driving okay and Right there at the steering wheel, that's where the emblem was. And it happened at the speed of a gunshot. Yeah. How is it that it only hit my arm? Yeah. And not like your chest or your throat or your head. Like that. It would have just like... It could have very easily been me hitting that car and done. Yeah. I read this article someone sent me and a similar situation happened to a woman that the same kind of thing happened and she went brain dead Fuck. and they had to pull her off life support. She was gone. So this is where it starts to become strange for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm left-handed, but Mm -hmm. I play bass right-handed. Yeah. And <laughs> the muscles like in this part of my arm, you know, are considerably like stronger than like this arm, mostly from from just masturbating though, not anything about bass playing. <laughs> yeah. But no. Okay, so look. <laughs> you have a you have a vein right here and I'm probably going to butcher all these terms, but I just remember them saying brachial artery, I think it was, and then the yeah, and the radial, artery. radial and brachial. Yeah. So, there's a main vein or artery right here. Yeah. And it forks. So I hit the uh, radial one. I severed it. Oh, shit. And they told me in the hospital I had had surgery, and they were saying, we got to remove some of the shrapnel that's in there. And if the vein is too short for us to just reconnect it, we'll have to take it out of my leg. And this is something I'll get back to in a second, but you really just have to surrender to the process at that point. Yeah. Because you just, what do you want? You know, you got to do something and Mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of time to think about it or fuss. Right. So they put me under. And when I woke up from surgery, I had an IV in my ankle and I thought, dang, dude, they had to take something. out." Fortunately, they didn't. They just reattached it. But in thinking about it, the accident and everything, the only thing I can come up with is that either for some reason, that little emblem went to the left but even still it hit my arm in two places yeah like it like it was like there was like a like shit, just, yeah 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 right. i mean well in the picture like you skipping could see rocks it. yeah yeah <laughs> exactly so it was like a round a more round one and then this one that went kind of like at an angle mm-hmm. right but going back to the whole like left-handed thing it happened to hit my arm that was stronger yeah and then it also didn't do any permanent damage you know, 
but yeah. I can't figure out how it, like, why would it go left? Or if it, that didn't happen, how would I have gotten my arm up quickly enough? I don't even, I don't remember any of that part. Yeah. You know? And then that's not even the weirdest part. I told you this already, but so my middle name's Devin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my middle name's Devin. And then I looked at my bracelet when I woke up from surgery and they put my middle name as Divine. Max Divine. And then shortly after that, my nurse walks in and she says, my name's Mercy. <laughs> Shit. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That's trippy, dude. And I just instantly said Divine Mercy, like in my mind. Yeah. And I was tripping out. And then my youngest sister, Makimi, she knows I love X-Files. Yeah. So when my family got there, she just put her iPad in front of me and she started up an episode of X-Files. And in that episode... Mulder almost gets his left arm cut off. Fuck. It was my left arm. Yeah. You know? And the following day, this is this is probably the most campy or corny aspect of it, but like the following day was Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really weird, dude. And um, side note, which is frustrating, but it's kind of funny now. So my family was trying to find me and they didn't know what part of the hospital I was in. And also the hospital didn't tell them exactly what had happened. They just said uh -huh. car accident. And then when my family got there, they were trying to find me. And then they said, oh, he had to have like abdominal surgery. So all they knew was car accident. And then now abdominal surgery, they had no idea, you know, if I was like ripped open or something like that. Um, but they got all that squared away. But then you go back to my perspective when I woke up, <laughs> when I woke up from surgery, um, you know, they keep it really cold in hospitals for one thing. And I had lost a lot of blood. Yeah. So I was like shivering when I woke up. Yeah. So I kept telling them, oh man, you got to like give me a blanket or something. So they kept putting blankets on me and eventually they put a blanket over my face entirely. <laughs> so I'm just completely like covered. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend was like. <gasps> and, yeah. And then they, 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 they wheeled me past my family like that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I just saw my two sisters, Nina and Makima, they were like, <laughs> and I was looking through the blanket. I was like, we'll see how much they really care about me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, when they, and then I was like, I have to do something. <coughs> I have to do something that like is going to be funny. And then I'm going to remember. I don't know why I thought that, but like, um, they put me into the room and, and I mean, I'm not, I'm pretty still and everything. And I raised my busted arm uh -huh. out of the blanket and I just went. <laughs> 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 and my whole family was like, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> uh, but there's been a lot of things I've been thinking about since then. Obviously, you know, you have a near death experience. I mean, like the, the comparison I always make as far as like the seriousness or like the blood loss and everything is like, if I were to just take this water bottle right here and just dump it all out. Oh, it was my arm. Mean. Drink that. Thank you. Um, when I went to go get my stuff out of the car, that was weird. That was weird because, you know, that's uh, a smell I'll never forget. The airbags coming out and like smelling like your own like flesh and blood. Yeah. You know, like that, that was the part that got me most about the image, too, is like there was a thorough inspection of that image mm -hmm. multiple times. Like, fuck, what did it hit? What, how did you do it? Because I thought, I thought for some reason, I was like, the only thing that makes sense is that he was like, he had his hand out the fucking window. And I was like, this guy fucking signaled the old way. <laughs> like, and then a yeah. car fucking, I don't know. But upon inspection, you, we zoomed up, and it was worse that it was a live image. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, but it was like, so I was going frame by frame in the live image and shit and zooming up and there are chunks of your flesh on the door. And you guys want to see it again? I'm just kidding. No, but it just, if, uh, wait, before you go on. Yes. When the fuck did you have time to take that picture? Oh, yeah, there's that part of it too. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Not a joke my legitimate like thought was that like i never I, I knew i knew that it was critical i knew that i probably was like i could die seriously but 
after I got off the phone with 911, because obviously, you know, I sent you guys all those texts. I sent yeah. four texts, but um, not driving, by the way, at that point. Yes, the car was stopped. The car was very stopped. Suck that, cops. Stupids. Nice people that I'll need. Hopefully not, but please come if I need you. Um. So, yeah, I was like, I'm going to be mad at myself later if I don't take this picture right now. <laughs> Like, almost, like, for, like, not even, like, comedic purpose, but just so that I could always be like, dude, man, you want to know how I got this scar, bro? Check it out, dude. Yeah. Nice. The other story that so I started- So you already made the decision to survive at that point. Hell yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. You know, that was something that, that PJ was talking to me about, and I didn't even think about it that way. Um, And please correct me on any of this, but from what I gathered, uh, you know- in general, there are times where people go through these kind of things or, or say, for instance, they get shot or, or something that could be lethal if you don't act quickly, but just the shock and the fear kills them yeah. because they just, you know, because that was what PJ said. He was worried that, you know, I took the took that picture and that I just like slumped over and I didn't get yeah. a chance to call 911. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, but I did that first. Too. I called nine. I called nine one one first. Yeah. I handled all that, and then I sent you guys those texts, and I just dropped my phone, and I was just like laying there for a sec. That's that's what. Yeah. Then that's when I tried to do the thing. Okay, because the the time gets blurry right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, because pretty if you're blurry in and out. Yeah. yeah. I I would have appreciated for those texts not to say, bad news. This is real. <laughs> uh. But I'm gonna. But I'll be okay. It just should have been picture, ambulance, thumbs up. I would have been like, okay, thank God. Duly noted. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I don't have to do that again. Don't but... do that again, please. <laughs> For fuck's sake. I don't. Yeah. I don't even want you to drive. I want to be your personal chauffeur. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I just want to make sure. That's that works. That works for me. I remember freaking the fuck out, and then everyone was. I mean, Roger had gone to Coachella because you guys were supposed to go. Yeah. You were supposed, supposed to work, to work Coachella. Coachella that weekend. Yeah. And. Oh man, it was fucking crazy. And you know, we hit up. You know, everyone was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. And then you had finally contacted us after I got off work and all that stuff. And then mm -hmm. me and Adrian were like, "Dude, like, I'm down to go see him. If he's all, all we have to know is the visiting hours. If mm -hmm. we just gotta go." So, and this has been weighing on my mind a lot mm -hmm. since that happened because we went. Like frantically, we we fucking went. I showed up here, met Adrian here, and he drove. We went straight to to the hospital. Well, we went to the toward the hospital, and we decided to stop at Seven Eleven and get you vegan cookies and yeah, thank takis. you for bringing me takis too, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I probably bought you way too many of those cookies. I st so still have some. Yeah, I still have some. I was like, he loves these. I do. Birthday cake month. He loves them. <laughs> these are friendship cookies. And uh, we went over there. And we were happy. Yeah, and that was the same thing. Max Divine. Because we were like, Max Diaz. Oh, okay. And the lady's like, no. <laughs> and we're like, what? And he's like, oh, other side of the hospital. Or no, car crash, whatever. And I was like, no, 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 no. And I remember he had said Divine. She's like, oh, Max, Max Divine. I was like, sure. <laughs> yes, that one. The dark one. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you pointed us in the right direction. And we went over there. And there you are with two fucking impossible burgers. Right there, just like happy as can be, <laughs> and your sister's right there, Makimi's right there, just like wiping your face, and just you looked so happy, and like all your sisters are there. Dara was there when we met your parents, mm -hmm. you know. We saw all that stuff, and I was like, "Damn, this fool is loved. How beautiful, you know." And then <clears throat> we're there, and you know we're joking around with you, and then more people show up. Like, more of your friends showed up. And I was like, this fool's so fucking loved. And it, to me, it made me so happy to see that. Adrian tasted your blood. Yeah, that's right. That was tight. Look at Adrian. Little fucking vampire. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing that, you know, like, just seeing how, like, and I've always told you, I mean, the first one we did, you are everyone's favorite person in the world. And it's fucking. I'm gonna get all choked. <laughs> no, I'm. I haven't even gotten to the part that really hit me the other day. 
but um it took me about a week to go get my phone out from like the tow yard and um i had about 200 messages on my phone of people checking on me i mean random people that i haven't talked to in yonks and like teachers from when i was in music school and just all this stuff and you know i can't thank you guys enough i was i never want to say you guys because i feel like a lot of people are watching this individually so i'm going to say i can't thank you enough because feeling loved and feeling you know that you have a friend in moments like that is it's beyond words it's irreplaceable you know and um I think that in the grander scheme of things, this was this was a gift. And the only thing I had to, you know, pay for it with were just like two scars, which to me are more like reminders. Yeah. And, and it almost cost you an arm and a leg vein. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. You know, um Yeah. You Okay, so I feel I feel like I, I have a duty now to like say this very directly, but from probably about 2015 until like now, or till you know the accident, um, I've gone off and on, you know, with like thoughts of like suicide. Yeah, as I think we all do, yeah. and we just don't want to say it. You know, it comes. It's weird because I think you get to a certain point in those thoughts and it becomes sort of permanent yeah. they're always there after that you know yeah they don't go away once you think once you think about it for the first time yeah that's like like if you when's the next time yeah or if you know like if you if you call the suicide hotline because you're like at that point and they talk to you for 30 minutes and then they cr and you cry and then they're like well are you good are you gonna get some go get some food get some sleep and try to think about it and etc they'll try to give you some help or whatever but you know like i can tell you that there is a cure for those thoughts and it's almost dying oddly enough yeah because i didn't think oh cool i'm out of here finally i can just dip i was like part of my french but i was just like fuck that yeah I continue. Yeah. And I didn't really think about it heavily for a while until just a few days ago. And it had to do, it's weird the things that trigger your thoughts to go down certain pathways or whatever. But basically, um, you know, I'm, I'm always like anti spoilers for movies. Yeah. But, you know, the internet has no, no chill. So I saw, uh, a spoiler for Infinity War, uh -huh. and it bothered me, this particular scene in the movie, and it doesn't anymore now because I've kind of like gotten through all like the thoughts of everything, and I was trying to think, I was like, man, why is this like, why is this like hurting me to my core? And I just dwelled on it for a little bit, and I thought about it, and I was like, you know, I've, a lot of the characters in that movie, like I've grown up with we as a lot of us have you know since we're little kids and that was how we like shaped a lot of our personalities especially um you know like as little boys you know somebody i want to be this guy i want to be this person and you kind of pick who you identify with a little bit mm -hmm. and it it just made me just go down this pathway of like you know why is it that in the face of death do people keep fighting mm -hmm. You know, and that's like the kind of part, I guess, that I'm still trying to like figure out. But I think I'm getting close to distilling it down into like just a few sentences mm. for me. But there was something I remember this guy saying. I'm not sure what the interview was, but this guy, I think he was like a game developer or something like that. And he said, yeah, you know, like when you're young, you feel invincible and, you know, you'll go and you'll skateboard and you'll do this and that and you'll take these risks and everything. And then... You either get older and, you know, your knee starts to hurt, your back starts to hurt, or maybe something happens and you kind of realize your own mortality, you know, or that you're not immortal. 
And in the sense he was speaking about it, he was saying that like, you know, yeah, you kind of like shrink back. Like you take more, you take less risks. And now that I have this perspective, I just think like, man, that's lame. Yeah. That's what a coward does. And that's what it was for me because, I, you know, not everybody gets to keep living. Yeah. You know? So being alive and knowing that, you know, like, you know, you like, you watch, you watch, a, I'm going all over the place here, but you watch like a nature documentary and sometimes, nice analogies. <laughs> You watch a nature documentary and sometimes the, you know, the deer or the gazelle gets caught by the alligator or by the bear or sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And it's that seemingly like randomness of like nature. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the same way with humans. Just. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It seems more impactful. Yeah. You know, but it's just like think like knowing that you're like that your life can end at any moment and it could be horrific yeah you might not be surrounded by your friends and family old and satisfied yeah you know what i mean it might happen like that so my thinking now is totally recalibrated you know if it wasn't before it totally is now because i just that's what i think i think like man like i am alive yeah it's crazy you know, and it makes me more fired up. Not only am I alive, but I get to keep making music. Yeah. Like I get to keep playing bass. Like I, that was the thing that really made me cry was like after, uh, after the surgery and I got released from the hospital, uh, I was at my parents' house and, um, my other sister, Nina, she had her guitar there and I've never been more happy in my life to play <laughs> some stupid songs from when I was like 13 years old. I don't do that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I knew <laughs> I knew that she was going to get me, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> I already went once almost. You know, and it was like two days later. My arm was still bleeding, but, you know, I could, uh, I could feel in my arm that there wasn't anything like long lasting. And then, so that happened Thursday. Uh, I was in the hospital Friday. You know, I spent the weekend over at my folks' house. Then on Tuesday, I was back at my house and I met up with Travis and we were, um, we had to do, we had to do reference tracks for the EP for Wires that we did the following weekend. And I had to like do all the parts. And Travis was like, dude, he's like, <laughs> he's like I can't believe you're playing right now. Yeah. And I couldn't think about it. I just had to, <sighs> you just got to keep moving, man. You yeah. just got to keep going. If you're here. It's not about, it's not about you, you know, you have to keep pushing. You have to keep inspiring people. Even if it doesn't make sense to you, it, it might mean something to someone else. Yeah. You know? Dude, honestly, like, seeing you go through all that. Like I was trying to say earlier, like with the whole, like just seeing you at the fucking hospital and shit, that shit, like how much it affected you, it's, it, I mean, it happened to you, it was huge, it was a huge thing, but I was surprised, honestly, at how much it affected everyone else, like, especially, I mean, even the way, like, I mean, obviously, I know I love you. You know, you're my best friend. So it's like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I see all that, and I knew that it would affect me, but the way it did was weird. Because, like, I started to think about myself in your situation. Mm. 
you know, and there was a weird fucking thing that happened. Like you made a joke about me posting a picture of me in the hospital. And yeah. And I, I think I talked to you about it a little bit before, but like I was thinking about seeing how amazing you are, just knowing how amazing you are and seeing how loved you are by everyone. And when I was in the hospital, you know, my blood was septic. I was going to die. Like my body wasn't taking to the antibiotics. Like I was, I was a goner for a little bit and I was in the hospital for a week and I didn't see a single person. And it fucking bummed me out to think about it like that. Cause when it was happening, I didn't really think about it. Mm. And honestly, like, I mean, my girlfriend was there and it was great to have her there. And honestly, she would be told she's the only person I wanted there, mm -hmm. you know, if it was going to be that. Yeah. But I was like, fuck. Like I started thinking about myself and like <laughs> somebody said that, I think it was Martin. He said like, dude, you're like the antithesis to Max. Like there's like, we're polar opposites, but we have so many similarities at the same yeah. time. But it's like Max is the happy, positive, super loved one. And you're the bitter one. <laughs> you're the angry one. You brought up a, a, Infinity War. I didn't like Infinity War. <laughs> no, but I'm just like, I'm that fucking guy. You know, like I started thinking about myself in those terms and I was like, yeah, Max, Max's actions, how he carries himself as a person warrants that type of love. And the way I carry myself doesn't. And it fucked with me mm. <laughs> for a good while. But it, it, I don't know. It, but it was nice to like, it was a good thing on like, lesson on like, how I should change myself. Because I see how amazing of a person you are and how strong you are. And the fact that you came out with that inspiration to keep going. And that's fucking beautiful. And I think you are one of the most influential, inspirational people I've ever met. And like to see you want to like strive more at that just makes me so happy. When I was going through it, my whole thing was I was afraid to die because I was being stubborn. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah. Like it wasn't like I'm going to live my life. It was like, nah, fuck that. You, like life you fucked me enough times I want to go out on my own terms you son of a bitch but that was it you know I don't know but thinking about all that stuff it's just it's insane the things that happen that, I don't know no the, we we are I've I said that to you before you know that we're the I said we're two sides of the same coin yeah but we're the same coin you know and I don't think that one can i don't know exist without the other because i'm very inspired by you i you know i think about you know most of my friends and i would say by my definitions that you are one of the few true artists that i know i mean that because i don't like when artists are always relatable because I feel like that's pandering mm -hmm. and that's stupid. You know what I mean? You, you're, I feel like your only job as an artist really is to just pull back the curtains all the time, whatever that means, you know, like to reveal things, to expose things. You know, people are, are, are scared to say how they feel or they're apathetic or they're complacent, whatever, you know, you know art is always counterculture. Hmm. in any point in time it's always rooted in absurdity or shock or you know whatever's on the outskirts of the popular thinking because that's what we strive for in life that's what we strive for in music you know that's why certain things are are they become boring very quickly in music because once your brain makes sense of them it wants to move on so I don't think of artists as people that are like, like me completely. Mm -hmm. I want them to be smarter than I am or be more literate or dress differently or, or do, or be just who they are, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how, 
I don't know. Like I try to, I try to look at everybody that way. You know, I don't, I don't want them to be like me. Yeah. I want them to be them. Yeah. You know? So I love you. I love you more. But okay. So this has been a whole sob fest so far, but we need to talk about something really cool that happened. Yes. Now. Okay. So I want to flip this a little bit. Just that bitch. You know, let's take a breath real quick, okay? <sighs> Remember I told you if I see look at look at this what's gonna happen. So obviously my acting career is gonna start in comedy. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. clear at this point. <laughs> but another cool thing about this too, and I told you this before as well, now I have a cry trigger when I get into dramatic acting. There you go. You know what I mean? You don't have to reach in your pocket and pull out a pube. <laughs> 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 no, I could just go like this. Ow. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> People like me. What the fuck? So, yes, after your accident, mm -hmm. you were playing like that. And honestly, I was like, don't, don't do that. But you said, fuck it. And you pushed through mm -hmm. and you did something really cool. You had studio time set up for the week after. Right? It was, it was mm -hmm. the week after. Mm -hmm. The weekend after your accident, you had studio time set up to record Wire Z P. Yep. And you fucking did it. Yup. And who was on that fucking EP? Thomas Pridgen. And he's a crybaby. I'm just kidding, but not really. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch this. He might. He, he might. might. Yeah. He might. He's cool. He's yeah, cool. It's, it's cool. cool. It was really cool to see that because we know that the Mars Volta is your favorite band. Fave. And to see Thomas Pridgen yeah. playing Wire's songs in the, the studio mm -hmm. was phenomenal. And we actually have some footage of that, and we're going to play that right now. A weird ass, weird hand, rock that. Well, now I feel all dumb about my questions. I was gonna be like, what are you doing? They're not, they're not even dumb. I was gonna be like, give you some like- You're actually better at interviews than a lot of fucking idiots. Really? Yeah, because I'd be doing this. I'd be like, so what inspired you? You'd be like, bro, can you get off? Can you stop talking to me, bro? I, a lot of times just walk out of interviews because people just ask me stupid ass shit. Like the same questions like, over that, right? No, I had this one recently. He was like, so where are we? Oh, wow. I was like, the Matrix, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Are you serious? Like, he wanted me to say Paris. Why? I don't, I didn't get it. I was just, I was like, is this seriously the interview? I'm done, dude. I'm not doing this shit. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the way we do it, we just, they just try to start a conversation. We don't ever go like, you know, oh, so who's like your favorite drummer? Or yeah. like, who is this and that? Because that's like, what they do all the time. Yeah, yeah but I feel yeah. like that information's out there already. You know what I mean? Like, if people no, want to know. they need it too. Just like, That's you know, if you listen to any, when they interview Cardi B, it's the same fucking question. It's like a press junket. Yeah, like it's, it's the, the same, same questions. Everybody asks the same fucking shit. And that's the fucked up thing, because those people, they don't, they just see it from like, you're a person. You're, you're this, you're this, yeah. this icon kind of person. And it's like, instead of, you're actually a person. You're yeah. actually experiencing shit. And it's like, that's one of the things we wanted to kind of ask you about was that whole like, with you, I mean, because you've been playing fucking forever, since you were a kid, yeah. you know? And we know all that. I mean, everyone can look at your Wikipedia page and know all that shit, but it's like... But you're also doing stuff like this, which is cool, where you're working with less established acts, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, you work with the bigger acts. Like, what do you think is the difference, kind of, like, between working with the bigger act, other than the money? A budget. <laughs> I mean, a budget. Yeah. Having a bunch of people doing shit for you and, like, Pro Tools... <laughs> I know I was waiting for it. I was waiting, fucking waiting for it, man. I was waiting for it. Oh my god. Pro Tools is a big one. Yeah. That I mean, it's I mean playing music with somebody established and not established is the same thing, man. Like, I mean, it's some really garbage ass established artists too. Mm -hmm. And it's some really amazing artists that ain't established. So I don't know, it's no real difference other than the budget, you know what I mean, and where you're doing it. Some people be like, you know what? I want to go. I want to go to Wyoming to go record this album in this fucking cabin. You're like, okay. <laughs> you know, when you got money, you could do that type of shit. 
when I was watching the Foo Fighters, it was like, yeah, we did this at our house. I was like, yeah, bitch, your house ain't like my house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck out of here. <laughs> it's just like that type of shit. It's the same shit, bro. I heard about that. It was some other group, and like uh, Dave Grohl was talking to him, and he was saying like, "Oh, you know, you guys should really just like go to like Tokyo for the weekend. Like, it's really fun." And they're like, "Yeah, we don't have Nirvana money, you, yeah. dumb, you dumbass." But yeah. like, it's funny. Yeah, he, they all forget. Oh yeah, I would be like, "Yeah, I'm, like I'm normal as fuck. I'm gonna drive my fucking Ferrari <laughs> to Whole Foods." <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, because I mean, like, I haven't I haven't played with anybody like, well. Aside from you or whatever, but like a lot of like big big timers that are like maybe more like celebrities or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't seem like you know being established is like the determining factor if you are doing dope stuff. I mean, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Basically, <laughs> like just cause you, just because you have money doesn't mean you're gonna make like dope music. You're not gonna you're not gonna be like you know. I mean, it ain't just stuff. the money. It's just like the whole. The whole like setup. It's like, it's like a guy who got a giant weed grow versus a guy who has one in his garage. It's like the guy with the giant weed grow has employees. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like having a, a good team around you is kind of like the most important shit. Cause a lot of these people are trash. Mm -hmm. They just got a nice ass team around them, and they got people who can hide the fact that they're trash, like makeup artists and shit. Mm -hmm. Put wigs on pigs and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's kind of like that in a different realm, you know what I mean? Even with, like, mixing a record, like, you mm -hmm. know. Raging Against the Machine is not trash, but if you listen to, like, the mix of Raging Against the Machine, you can hear the bass getting dramatically fucking louder and quieter. Right, right, right. Like, like the breakdowns. If you, like, put that shit on some headphones, you could tell that the dude who mixed that shit is a beast, you know what I mean? So, just that, that type of shit, being able to afford those kind of people and kind of... Being able to rent out Ocean Way for a fucking month, you know what I mean? And fucking seven grand a day or some shit. Like, that kind of shit makes it where it's really hard to make a shitty record. You gotta be fucking <laughs> shit at that point. You can hire everybody you want, fucking from videographers to photographers to engineers to musicians. And then you come out with a shitty album, dude, you are fucking, fucking hard. You're true garbage, you know what I mean? It's real hard, so. Yeah. Having access to so many people, you know, like these super art, big artists, they got access to beats. Every producer, every everybody wants to work with them because they're so-and-so, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People fucking get a less ball, you know what I mean? People go out right now with big-ass artists for no money. You know Just what because? Mean? Dude, right now. Yeah, yeah. Paying like the bass player $400 a night, but they be... Fucking making fucking a million dollars a show type shit. People be doing all kind of fucking fucked up shit. It's just having a team around you, bro. You just have the right people around you. And it don't matter how big or non-established you are if you got a good team. Yeah. Dope. When you go and you play like stuff like this, like, because I know you played with, with the other band with Travis and yeah. all that stuff and with all that, it's like, do they... I don't know because I didn't get to see how this whole thing worked. Did they just kind of expect you just like to? So we have these songs. Um, just just do whatever you want, and, and it's like that. Or sometimes, I mean, yeah. it just depends. Like, you know, the ideal situation is like Pro Tools, and like <laughs> <laughs> and being able to like punch in and do like certain shit. Just certain studio tricks that motherfuckers do and make shit the process way faster. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then everyone, you know, you get in the studio and the guy don't want you to move the drums or some, anything. You know, it's always, you're always in someone else's space. So you, it's always different. It's always maybe we don't have a motherfucking Pro Tools. You got to record this shit like the Beatles fucking recorded it 30, 100 years ago. Yeah. Sometimes it's like that, <laughs> but <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it, bro. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> how is it like they don't like have vibing with people? Though. How, vibing? Yeah. Man, the first day I was just grouchy because I just drove here, yeah. and so like I mean, I think if every you drove here, didn't you? she drove here. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like if you give everybody like space to be themselves. It don't really matter. You know what I mean? Like, I've been in the studio with people kicking drug habits. Oh, wow. <laughs> and motherfuckers, like, <laughs> I went to the studio one time and motherfucker was like, if you smoke him out, you don't get paid. I was like, all right. 
That motherfucker's a drug. He's really on drugs. That <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker will nod off and shit. Like, I've been in studio sessions like that, so, you know, that's a different kind of issue, you know. I've been in the studios with so many different people break up with their girlfriend and they crying in the booth and shit. And, you know what I mean? The studio is like, people be pouring their heart in the studio. You see all kind of shit. People don't always be in a happy mood walking in the studio. Yeah. yeah. What's some of your favorite records? These people are depressed. Which is beautiful. Like, since you've been associated with so many people, like, who do you think you've, like, vibed with the most, like, had the most chemistry? The most fun? Yeah. Everybody in the resident they can't, we fucking be kicking it. Residential camp? Nice. We be fucking chilling. Hella hard. Like I can kick it with the I can kick it with the sound guys to the tech to the tour manager by myself and have fun. You know what I mean? Not even not just the musicians. I can kick with Resident mm-hmm. they do. I can kick it with Renee too, but everybody. This will be Renee be writing me on WhatsApp about just the funniest fucking shit. And so like that that's the coolest cause nobody's on some like I mean, that fool be right. If I'm riding in a van, he's riding in a van. You know what I mean? So there's no like ego trip. Yeah, I mean everybody got somewhat of an ego, but it's just yeah. like it's just hella mellow and everybody's hella fun. You know what I mean? But it's been a, it's a I mean it's been a bunch of people who I was cool with for a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was, right, it was right. like <laughs> <laughs> I was like this was tight until you did some fuck shit or you just hella weird. <laughs> I don't know. People are weird and like I don't know. I think here. I think I've been playing with a lot of people who live here. And so to me, after last night, it's actually, I think these people were actually normal. Because last night, uh, I mean, just in my couple of days here, off camera, I'm going to tell you a funny oh, ass story. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think people are just generally fucking attention hungry as fuck in LA. Big time. Yeah. People be oh, so yeah. thirsty for no mm-hmm. fuck. It don't even be nothing going on, yo. It just be like, God damn, yo. They're just always camera ready. They're just always like yeah, ready. But it's to... for no reason. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. even that deep. It's like, I don't know. Man. That should be hella extra. So I kind of feel like it's just a thing where you just kind of get caught, you like know, caught up in the wave. So I don't know. I I live in a different place. Can I get paid now? Yeah. <laughs> so we had to cut while well, you guys watched that footage because there was a lot of feels going on. We kind of shook him out a little bit, but I, I, and I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, actually, for any that. No, not sorry that that went down the, that way. That was beautiful. Got real. It's yeah. rare that these things happen. Yeah, I'm glad you're still here. Me too. But with that being said, we it was cool to talk to Thomas a little bit. He seemed a little reluctant because he was tired. Yeah. He was <laughs> but, all down at first. Yeah. But, but, yeah, after recording, dude, you're just like, I just want to, like, can I bounce? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? But, no, dude, he was super cool, and he's a super real person. That was awesome. It was cool just to get to meet him. You know, I've seen mm-hmm. him at NAM a couple times, and I've just been like, oh, shit, that's Thomas Fridge. And, and then, like, being able to go and sit down and have a conversation with him. Yeah. You know, it was, it was awesome you know joke around with them and shit so you're like holy shit and it's kind of cool because i feel like what we're doing like especially how we're doing it it's like it makes me feel happy i feel like we're just it makes me feel like we're on this like right path Mm -hmm. because i finally get to i feel like we're getting to a point where we finally get to like interact with our heroes to a capacity that is is on our level or or, or on the right level not approaching as a fanboy but as a collaborator Right. You know, so that's really fucking cool. But I wanted to ask you, like, I mean, shit, you made that happen. Like, I mean, I know that you got that through Travis, probably. Yeah. You know what? He's, he's, Thomas is more accessible than than you might think. He's busy, but he's not going to just straight up ignore you. Yeah. You know, if you go through like the right channels and everything. But yeah, he had, that definitely helped because he had worked with Travis uh, on, on, I think a few body rampant songs. I know of at least one. I'm not sure how many he did, but yeah, Travis's other band, he worked with them. And, um, you know, we had 
we were just Travis and I were trying to come up with a game plan for this year and like how we want to you know see the band progress over this year and so and 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 so, uh, on after that and well we were like well do you think Thomas would do it and he was just like yeah let's, let's hit him up and yeah we had it scheduled to pretty quickly <laughs> we had it we had it dialed in pretty quickly and um it was crazy because you know like in light of everything i was like man the last thing i would need is for him to just be like hey dude like i can't actually do it and then i'm like dang you know busted arm canceled session feeling dumb yeah but i didn't dwell on those things i was just like we're gonna you know come monday morning after all this is done i'm just gonna be like yeah you know, we did it and um yeah I, I mean it all came together pretty quickly it goes like how anything else goes you know you got to coordinate you got to make sure there's some money flowing to keep people invested yeah and uh to secure things you know so we had to i had to come up with all of that like uh that same week because one of the things i was on my way to go do when the accident happened was i was going to go finish up some work for somebody and collect some money and then use that <laughs> to pay towards for that yeah. yeah yeah so woo. yeah <laughs> no shit yeah but uh we were all talking about it too at, a, at the owner we went to a studio by my house it's called big ego mm -hmm. and uh the owner there chris uh him and i were both talking about it and he was like man he was like honestly he was just like this is the kind of things that make for really great records you know when all said and done and i was kind of feeling similarly to that because i'm just like yeah you know you're just doing any kind of creative endeavor you know maybe because of the importance of it mm. to people that aren't in it or whatever or um maybe it's a little bit it, it's not so much that it's selfish but i mean you know you're you're creating your own stuff so you gotta make it happen and everything um i totally lost my train of thought but i will get it back but basically I was just saying that it's like you, you, it's good when you have some sort of substance behind it. Yeah. That's like, relatable to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? It means more. Yeah. It wasn't so much that we were just like, ooh, we're this band from LA. Yeah. We're trying to get this done. It's just like, dang, you know what? Yeah. They're like, there, there was, there was like a fight in it. And that was like relatable to people that are non musicians too. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you had to like overcome something more or less. I think when stuff like that happens, it's really cool because the thing is we'd like to think that people get it or care. Yeah. But, you know, we're not, it's not always, it's not always the case. Right. Yeah. But uh, it, it's really cool because I think subconsciously when you hear something that has that kind of depth to it or that kind of like trauma behind it or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, whatever mm -hmm. struggle behind it, when when that's there and it gets done and it gets done right and you take the time and all that stuff and you just rush it and all that shit like i think that that feeling is there mm -hmm. and people don't know what it is or why so i'm really fucking excited to hear the ep honestly especially after all that yeah and it's gonna be phenomenal you know i'm the biggest cheerleader <laughs> i'm excited for it too man yeah. I, you know there's a lot more uh in the works behind it and like some of the reasons why we went that route of having him play the studio we went to it was all with some more thought behind it versus just like well we just need a studio to do this at yeah there was you know reasons for all this stuff that i mean you gotta even before even before this whole ordeal and everything you know that was kind of already my my thought process about this it's just like you know you people go through so many little moments in their life where they just like deal with feeling down or they deal with like anxiety mm -hmm. and it just keeps going on on like a day-to-day -day basis and none of us ever really think about the fact that you can not feel that way if you choose to yeah so like i said even before this accident i was already like no you know what we're musicians so we're gonna make some music mm -hmm. you know what i mean we're not just gonna like half-ass this we're not gonna just leave this up to chance or like oh it didn't work out like oh well i'm gonna be sending emails i'm gonna be calling people i'm gonna be like securing deposits and et cetera, et cetera, and scheduling this because, you know, I don't want to keep living like the same year over and over again. Just be like, yeah, I really, you know, one day yeah. when I find $2,000 on the street, I'll get this thing done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, no, Max, like 
we're waking up today and you know how many we're trying to we're trying to build this structure how much of that are we going to get done today yeah that's it point blank you know like uh i did that whole thing where i didn't drink uh coffee or alcohol for like a month because i was noticing that on my morning commute i would just get a really anxious feeling in my stomach Mm -hmm. and it wasn't because i was late for work or anything like that it was just because my body was accustomed to drinking coffee at that time but -hmm. i was feeling gross i was feeling like disturbed Mm. down with the sickness (laughs) you know (laughs) and i was just like that's i was just like i don't want to feel like that yeah, so, nobody wants to feel like yeah. disturbed. <laughs> he had those, few, uh, you know, those little things right there. But yeah, you know, yeah, so it's, I mean, you can compare it to anything. Like your back hurts and it's just like, well, fix your posture yeah. every day. You know, do some yoga, do whatever you got to do, but yeah. don't let it just, don't roll over and accept it. Yeah. You know, and this is like a, a large and small concept. You know, there's things that we do every day and we just accept it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to not go full motivational speaker right here, but that's just like my whole thought on that is that, you know, why do we, you know, you should, you should be happy with who you are, like, or, or you should be happy with your space, with your, I see people's houses sometimes, Mm -hmm. or you go in someone's room and it's decorated cool and you look at it and you can see their personality in their room. It's like, yeah, that's their space. You know what I mean? So like. You should feel that way like about yourself and about your life. Yeah. You should be like happy with your decisions and with what you're doing. Yeah. The, yeah. That's interesting because I've always had this kind of thing because like you talk about people just accept their situations. Like that's just a thing. Mm. You know, most people do that. They're yeah. in a situation. They're like, I'm going to accept that this is where I'm at. Yeah. And it's probably not going to get any better or what. And maybe they don't even think that they're just like, this is life. Like what else am I supposed to do? Yeah. You know? And it was something like Martin and I, we've talked about this shit for years. I remember like one night being stoned to shit and just being like, dude, like if people never like ask why they have what they have, like they'll never know if they could have had anything better. That's a good one actually. Yeah. And then Martin was like, oh shit. (laughs) Followed up with, I'm really high right now, dude. He's like. (laughs) Hi. <laughs> you got any cookies? No. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I don't know where I was going with no, that. No, you, you have to. Yeah. You have to wake yourself up. You have to. You know, because yeah. you're gonna. You're gonna do that. You're gonna find yourself. You know, being older and just being like, dang, I didn't realize that much time passed, and now the time has passed. Yeah. And I can't, you know, fix those things. But yeah, I. Mean, I, I sometimes I look at people that people would maybe consider like quirky or sometimes kind of corny. Like, you know, like you see an old couple and they match, you know, they wear, Oh, we're going to wear this color today. (laughs) And you might not do that because you think it's corny, but how dope is it that some people that old still have those kind of thoughts? Yeah. You know, that they're like, we're going to like, this is what we like. Teal. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to wear white pants and Keds and we're going to wear a teal shirt. It's You're like, wearing that old leisure suit. I don't care <laughs> that it's 2018. Sorry. Wait, look at me. No, I'm just checking your eyes. Make sure you don't have the cataracts. cataracts. <laughs> yeah. But stuff like that. You know, I did. Like, you, you go to a concert See, or you go your to, balls are in your shoes. This okay. corned beef is, is too fatty. Yeah. <laughs> well, why do we come here? We come here every weekend. Who are you? Yeah. Oh. Doc, I don't know what to tell you. She's just. She's not the woman I fell in love with anymore. Just <laughs> see this potato when I roll over in the morning. <laughs> Anyways, we majorly digress because I want to ask you what it was like, like personal experience. Okay. Like you went and you got that shit done. Yeah, dude. You hit him up. You guys were in the fucking studio. And like, w- was there any like defining moments of like, th- I'm hearing my bass, I'm hearing Travis's guitar. And that's Thomas Pridgen playing the drums. Yes. Like, yes. So the, the, the first day was a little rocky at first. We had to kind of get our workflow together. Yeah. But the second day, it, man, it was so cool because it got to this point where he would do a take of one part of a song mm-hmm. and I'm listening to it in the control room. People like to take those pictures where they're like in front of like the console and everything like that. But I'm in the, I'm in the control room. 
and he would do something and I would just hear after the tick like how is that bro and then you know you put, hit the little intercom button and I was just like I have to direct him right now oh yeah you know the pressure yeah and then but it was like it was like uh it was like being a little kid and then just like realizing like you're in the pilot seat yeah and you're excited more so than like than terrified than terrified yeah. yeah so then I just said to him hey like you know this song or or give me this kind of feel and he was like oh yeah yeah okay for sure for sure and then he was like excited about it and he did it and then like he nailed it and then it just it was a surreal moment cuz then i you, you know you have to you have to realize your role in whatever you're doing yeah you know like for me and this is just like something in my life that i had to take command of which i still work on is that you know like being like a taller person or having like the kind of personality i have and this is different for everyone but for me i noticed that like sometimes people do kind of uh like any band i've been in they didn't want to necessarily say i was like the music director mm. but as soon as the song got frustrating to work on it's like max well max you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so there would be times where i'd be like well i don't want to i don't want to do this i don't want to but I then i do that <laughs> but then you know you realize like they're they're looking to me to do this yeah. so you feel like kind of like an older brother in a way you feel like a, a duty or like a responsibility mm -hmm. or like also in like manner um before we did the session and this was a trip but it was a compliment so um i told uh i told michael the bass player from, do you guys know iris that band uh i've never actually met them but I've seen they're them. great yeah, dude. They're, they're awesome. yeah, you, yeah yeah i've seen them there mm -hmm. we love all of you guys it's been too long, but we love you. I don't know you, but I'd like to. Yeah. Come on. Come on in sometime. You freaking let's, cuties. Let's talk. Tell us how to be successful in <laughs> this band life. But I told Michael, their bass player, um, I was buying some drums from him, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, speaking of drums, we're working with Thomas Pridgen this weekend or in the next weekend or whatever. And he was just like, oh, cool, dude. And I was like, These, we're working with come on, man, you know? And then I realized, like, people expect me to do stuff like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that was weird. They're like, well, yeah. Well, because yeah, you, mm -hmm. you had that show yeah. where Adri oh, what's, I guess, Adrian Adrian yeah, Gonzalez. Yeah, and he was playing sax. That was, a, that was a trip, dude. You want to talk yeah. about a trip, man? Like, here, yeah, and we told him, like, super last minute. Like, I was just like, hey, this song's like A flat minor. Like, you want to jump on? He was just like, let's do it. Nice. And... I like there was certain points like where we're playing and like I couldn't even like look over at him because he was doing like the stuff that I, like he's kind of like known for and I was just like man this is like but you know going back to that whole thing p sometimes people ask me this stuff and it's just like you just have to ask and then be prepared for the answer yeah they don't don't and don't get don't don't get discouraged yeah. from a no yeah you're gonna hear so many no's like, in your just, life just know you had the balls to ask. You'll be surprised. You know. You'll be surprised what what this much courage does for you. Do you want to have sex with me? Let's do it. <sighs> See, that's simple. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was, so he was just like, oh that's yeah. Horny. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael Michael was just like, oh cool man. And then he was just, and I was just kind of like, yeah, dude. I was like, you, you know who that is? And he's just like, yeah. I just, he's just like, I I thought you were tight with those dudes. That's what he said. Yeah. And I'm not trying to, you know to my own horn but that was just like wow that's cool that you know now now i feel like okay i'm only holding myself back yeah you know what i mean like i can't be like taking days off and thinking like oh well, people don't really want to make music with me or whatever it's like you know speaking to adrian like i post a picture of the stitches and everything and he was just like man like i just heard like i hope you're you're okay and everything like that i'm thinking man this guy's probably like you know in bristol or something like that and he's like taking the time out of his day to check on me i was like that's super nice you know yeah so you just gotta just go for it like you said what's the worst that can happen they tell you no yeah you're not gonna be a fool or you're not gonna be you're not gonna be dumb for asking it's dumb to not ask yeah so okay don't get into a car crash to realize this stuff yeah. or for it to become real for you. Seriously. Just do it. You just cry yourself. here with us like we did and then, you know, change your fucking life. We're giving you a cheat sheet. Party now, study later. 
<laughs> don't go to college. No, but seriously, don't. Don't. Learn, learn, a, learn to do something with your hands and don't get that degree. I guarantee anything you, you, you want to learn in college, like YouTube, bro. Yes. YouTube. And I'm not just saying that because we're on YouTube. <laughs> Ask your younger sibling. They'll tell you. They'll tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Never had sex? YouTube it. (laughs) (laughs) They got all kinds of uh, sex on the YouTube. Yeah. It's hidden as long as it's medical. We're fucking getting off the fucking point. Point is, so that's tight. You got Thomas Pridgen. You're dope as fuck. Wow. Thank you. Uh, No, I mean, seriously, I mean, and and just saying that, like, when people are like, oh, I thought you were tight with those dudes, like, yeah, well, I mean, you tell these stories and and all these things, and it's like, well, people do expect you to be able to do things that that way. I do. Anyway, like, when you told me that Thomas Prison was going to record with you, I was like, that's tight, but I was like, yeah, of course. It's Max. (laughs) Like, Max, Max gets what he wants. (laughs) That's right. Nope. You know, I wanted what, you, you were, you're a manifester. Ooh. All right. I like that. Someone told me that one time. Some, a manifester? Some, some ladies like, there's so many different personality types in the world. And she's like, mm, when's your birthday? And I was like, don't, don't. <laughs> don't do this right now. Don't do this. Don't, don't do that fucking, I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, you're a Sagittarius. You're a, you're a little angry. Fella. She pulls out a little you piece know? of quartz. Like. Exactly. But she was like, mm, I can see it on you. You're a manifester. And I was like, tight. Cool cool but yeah you're a manifester max i like that thank you you make things happen you got to somebody's got to yeah so you know moral of the story was sometimes you almost die and you gotta eat. sometimes you die <laughs> sometimes you don't die and if you're watching this you're probably not dead yeah so and so what's your fucking excuse for not pulling the trigger bitch <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's just let people figure it out. There's honestly, there's too many people here anyway. I think the ones who who live are supposed to, and the ones who don't, that sounds bad. Wait, no, no, no. Okay, wait, 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 wait. This is how we're going to do this. Okay. Say, just roll with me on this one. Okay. Say there's too many people. There's too many people. There's too many people. I swear to God, this is a Thanos thing. Shut up! (laughs) No! Shut up! (laughs) Let me do this! Okay, there's too many people. Thank <laughs> you.